Hi, I'm Corden C, and I'm the developer of this game, Concealed Intent, and today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to play Concealed Intent. Okay, so I've set up in a waves skirmish with the standard ship, the Corvette, which you can see right here. You know it's my ship because it has the blue ID ring and it's selective because it has the uh, triangle arrows around it. Player ships and uh, stations and drones are generally in blue at the start or have blue ID rings. Uh, enemies in red, neutrals, unknowns in orange, allies in green. Uh, I should point out if you want to you can change that, just hit escape uh, to go to the menu, then options, gameplay and you can change the colors there. So if you have trouble telling the difference between blue and green, just change it. Uh, also all the keyboard controls I mentioned can also be changed under the controls menu. Okay, back to the game. So Concealed Intent is a turn-based game. So what you do is you give your units, your ships, plans, uh, instructions essentially on what to do and then you click action up here and you will perform those those actions at the same time as all the other uh, ships and enemies and teams or whatever in the scenario they will also do all their plans at the same time so it is a simultaneous turn-based tactical combat game now I'll just start off with movement there's the corvette there the corvette is the standard or default ship because it's the most flexible really, uh, most adaptable to any situation. Other ships like a destroyer or a cruiser can be very powerful, uh, but their tactics are pretty much dictated by their, by their loadout. Whereas with the Corvette, you can change the loadout, this being the loadout here, what it's carrying, I'll go through that in a second. Um, and so you can use it in many different ways. So what is the Corvette carrying? It's got three laser drones, which are very important. It has some chaff flares and a decoy. Both of those are countermeasures. Uh, it has an assault class engine. It has a medium pulse laser and a powered omni sensor array. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by just showing you how to move, which is essentially the assault engine. It's, what what each ship can do is it can do one action per every component it has, and each component has a certain action. So the action associated or the plan associated with the engine is to move. So to move you just go out to roughly where you want to go uh, and then right click and the waypoint GUI will appear. Then you can move it around and the ship will move to wherever that little circle is at the end. And you can get an idea of how far it is by, by the size of that circle that appears. So we can just then left click and now the ship will move there. And if you want to, you can add extra waypoints, so you just right click again and add more. And that uh, when it goes orange, you've reached the limit of how far it can move in one turn. And each, each engine class has its own distance in a turn, so in this case the assault engine, that's roughly how far, it, there we go. There, so you can see it can go about 3,000 kilometers in a turn, and beyond that, you're into the next turn. If there is yellow, that'll just be left over for the next turn, and I'll show you that by leaving it in now. Okay, so then action and it'll do and this your ship will do its act, its uh, plans which in this case is just to move there we go and you can see the the leftover movement from from last turn is, is still there now you can also see that we now have uh, another ship appear down here in the in the focus buttons so where is it and as you see over here there's this little arrow that tells you where it is so you can rotate the camera which just click in in empty space and then move the mouse and you can rotate the view. It rotates around whatever's selected so you can see right now we're rotating around the Corvette because that's what's selected. And over here we have a red unknown sphere so we don't know what it is. Is it a drone? Is it a ship? Is it a station? Don't know. Could be any of those things. One of the, what we're going to have to do is actually find out what it is. So to do that we have to improve our detection on it and our moment, if we hover over it, we can see our detection is 7% which is also our chance to hit it, although we can't hit it because it is currently out of range of our weapons. So what we're going to do is move closer towards it 
like that. And the other thing to notice is, is it's got this height marker, which means it's actually below us. So if you scroll around like that, you can see it's actually below the plane. Because this game, Concealed Intent, is completely 3D. You can move up and down out of the plane. So you could do that, for instance, when you're moving. If we, So there I just uh, clicked on the end of the waypoint, and now I can move it again. And if I right and hold, if I right click and hold, I can move up and down out of the plane. So we'll actually just move a little bit down out of the plane. And make sure it's good. There. Okay. So now you can see we're moving a little bit down. And so as well as rotating, you can also pan the arrow keys or W A S D keys will move the uh, move the view. And you can zoom in with the middle mouse with the scroll button or with uh, plus or minus. And again, those can all be changed with controls. So as well as move towards it, we're also going to go to active sensors. Your sensors will passively detect uh, anything that's around them all the time, but you can greatly improve their ability to detect by turning them on. And so you just, in this case, I've just clicked the powered omni sensor component and it's gone on. You can also use P. The P key will also turn it on. Uh, to turn it off, you just right-click the component. Oh, so, and that's the same with all these components. Uh, Left-click turns them on, and right-click turns them off. So, for instance, with the with the engine, if I wanted to add a new waypoint, I could click the engine and add a new waypoint. And if I right-click the engine, it will delete a waypoint. You can also hit uh, backspace or delete to delete a waypoint. I'll just actually do that now to show you. So, hitting backspace, waypoint gone. There, let's put it back. Okay, so and we'll turn on the powered omni. There's a bit of a uh, bit of a trade-off with turning on active sensors, which I'll explain in a little bit. And this sensor shell that you can see is related to how powerful your sensors are. So the bigger the shell, the more powerful the sensors. But you can see beyond that. What you can think of these the size of the shell as it's the distance to which nothing that isn't completely hidden can hide from you. Uh, I'll explain that a bit again later as well. So let's just do action and move towards it. And you can see it's... There we go. So now we know it's a drone. And if we just click on the uh, our ship again, it will center the view on our ship. Yeah, so now we know it's a drone. And we can click on it, and it tells us a little bit about it. We know it has an inclusion sensors. Other than that, we don't know what it is. And then if we click on our ship, it goes back to our ship, nicely centered. So now when we hover over it, we can see our uh, our detection, our to hit chance is now 39%, so much, much higher. So what we're going to do is right click, and we've now set a plan to shoot at it with our medium pulse. So you can see the medium pulse laser is now on with a 35% chance to hit for 3 damage to its hull. If we go to it, we don't actually know how much hull it's got, so we don't know how much damage that'll do. It's unknown here. Whereas ours shows we've got 16 hull. But if it's a drone, it's probably got not that much. 3 may be enough to destroy it if it hits. And we'll also we'll move over towards it. The when you hover over a, another another object, it comes up with the default action for that object. So for enemies, the default action is to shoot them. So you can see as I move the mouse pointer over the enemy, the uh, shooting information appears. So then if you right click, you should either turn on or turn off uh, your, your shooting plan. Uh, if it's one of your own ships or a neutral ship or an ally ship, it's the movement. So here you can see um, I'm hovering the mouse pointer over the research station and it says move towards it. And now if I right click it'll set a movement plan towards it, which I don't want to do, so I'm just going to hit delete. You can also, if I wanted for instance to move towards the drone, I could hover the mouse over it and press the Alt key down and it shifts to the alternative action, Alt for alternative, so now I can move towards the drone, which is what I will do. So there. So I'm now shooting the drone, moving towards the drone, and I'll turn on my powered Omni. Seems like a good plan, but the thing you need to remember is down here, 
My Cohen's signature is now very large. Now 67. Which uh, normally, if I do nothing, it will be 10. 10 being the, the base. You can see there the base is 10. So the I've gone from 10 to 67 because of all the things I'm doing. And in a second I'll explain what that is. Why that's important. After we just do the action and see how we go. So we missed. And but now we have a hundred percent chance to hit. So what we'll do is we'll just destroy this with four. And if you click on it now, you can see it's got two hull. And we're going to do four damage at with a hundred percent chance of hitting. So we're about to destroy it. So let's just do that. Boom. Gone. Okay. So that one's gone, but being the wave scenario, more immediately appear. And you can see down here, two more have appeared, and here they are, they're unknown. So what was the process of going from this unknown sphere to knowing that previous one was a, uh, was a probe, and hopefully finding out what these are? Well, basically it's got to do with your detection of these ships. And that is driven by two things, how good your sensors are and how much signature the ships, your target ship is producing. So basically the more signature you produce, the easier it is for other ships to detect you. And the stronger sensors you have, or the more sensors you have, we'll get to in a second, the easier it is for you to detect other ships. And it's exactly the same for your opponents. No cheating, exactly the same. So right now, if you hover over this down here, you can see this is how much signature we produced last turn, 25. And at the moment, based on our plans, which is nothing, we're producing 10. So everything, nearly everything we do will produce more signature and make it easier for uh, these other ships to detect us. But in the end, we're going to, um, so I right click, Chose a point, then right click and held to move down, to move, see, down towards them. And you can see that the signature has immediately gone up. So how do we go from 29 to knowing how much we detect them all? At the moment, they're 4% and 1%. And what it is driven by is the sensitivity of your sensors. So if we hover over the sensors, you can actually see. How, how good it is. So we'll see how far away is this ship or this, this thing. 7,000, 7,000. Okay, so you can see at 7,000 with active sensors, sorry, with passive sensors, you're probably not detecting them at all. So what you basically do is you work out what the sensitivity is at that range, in this case 7,000. Uh, the range is 7,000, so seven, sensitivity is about zero. And then you can multiply the noise that ship makes by the sensitivity, and that's roughly what the gain is. So down here, it's making as a signature of 46, but unfortunately, 46 times zero means that uh, our gain is zero. So then the next question is, how is it that we have even seen them? Because if you have no detection, the ship will not appear, it just won't, won't appear on the screen. And how that works is that you share your detection and your to hit chance among all your ships. And this isn't our only ship, we also have this research station over here. So if we click over to this research station and look at its sensors, which are occlusion, we can see its, sen its occlusion sensors work a bit better. So here, at about 7,000 kilometers, you're getting uh, a sensitivity of about 0.1. So 0.1 times noise of 46 is about 4%. So if we click here, we should have about 4%. 4%. And that's how it works. So here, this our Corvette has got uh, a detection of zero on this ship. Our station has a detection of 4%, and so the station has shared its detection with the Corvette, which is why the Corvette now has 4%. So it can be very helpful 
to have more ships with more sensors so you can cover a greater area and share detection among them all. Which is one reason you have drones. And the other reason, and I'm just going to click on these drones now to launch them. So you can see as you launch them they appear over here on the left. And now they will add to uh, my detection. Now I will share their detection. So I'm just clicking on them one by one and moving them down. We'll move this one as far as we can bit further than the rest. There we go, and turn on its turn on its uh, sensors. And now we'll share detection among all of them, and we should have a much better lock. By the way, to move between them, you just you can just click on them. Um, you can also press Tab, which will shift uh, in turn between your different ships. And if you want to know which one you haven't dealt with. If their name is flashing, it means they have no plans. So our research station has no plans, but that's fine. All the others, none of them are flashing. So you know that they have, they're doing something. And also, you can see all their plans because I've clicked on this button here, which says show all plans. Otherwise, if you take it off, you just show the plans of the selected ship. But I want to see them all, so there we go. And now let's see what happens. Okay, so now we've got a much better, much better detection, 31%, and we're much closer. So, how to know how much signature you're creating? Uh, for instance, when you click on your sensors, how much does that make? Well, it, it'll tell you. Hover over it, and you can see there, these sensors produce 20, add 20 to your signature. If I was to shoot, so if I hover over the ship, right click, so I'm now shooting at it, 31% chance of doing 6 damage. Uh, you can see here, uh, it's doing 15 extra signature for trying to shoot. And it also tells you how much damage you'll do based on the range. And if you move, so if I move over here and move it a little bit, move it down, again it all adds up. And you can see this graph will tell you how much signature you'll create based on how far you've moved. And if you hover over it, it gives you the breakdown. Base 5, Engine 9, Weapons 15, Sensors 20. There's also comms of 1. That's basically the communication with your main ship. Comms of 1 I mean, is the communication cost with your main ship, with the Corvette. Um, so you can keep control. Of that uh, of that drone. Okay, and let's uh, let's shoot it at a few times. It's also possible to decrease your signature. So here we're on the Corvette, and it has a signature of 38. But we can lower that by using countermeasures. So if you launch countermeasures, you see we launched two countermeasures. Two, two chaff, and it means our signature has gone down by 16 to 22. Which means, since it's roughly uh, roughly linear, that means it's probably about uh, the Corvette is now 40% harder to detect. And it also pos it's also possible to go all the way down to zero. So, for instance, if decoy, which is uh, subtracts 35 from your signature, click on that. Now you can see signature next turn is zero. What that means is no one will be able to detect your ship. It will essentially disappear from their sensors. The enemy will just not be able to see it. Similarly, if one of your enemies gets down to zero signature against you, then it will disappear from the screen. The other way to, uh, to disappear is just to hide behind something. If you hide behind a planet, you need line of sight. So if the Corvette was the other side of this large, two, yeah, yeah, this two. If it was the other side of this large uh, gas giant, then you wouldn't be able to see it, and there'd be no detection on it. Although of course, because all of the ships on a on a team share their detection, if if there's one of them nearby, then that'll be enough for them to share. Anyway, let's go. Let's just 
So that is the basics of uh, of how to how to play concealed intent. I'll just go through it again. Oh, and the reason the drone has now disappeared is because that drone here, so it's now gone to orange or neutral, is because it was being controlled by the spaceship, the enemy spaceship, and with the enemy spaceship gone, the drone is now not controlled by anything, so now it's neutral. And it'll just sit there and do nothing. And we haven't been hit by anything, so our hull is still there, otherwise this would start to slowly disappear. And the hull integrity here is the same as shown again over here, and these are also the noises, so you can hover and see what the signatures are. Okay, so basically, uh, each of the components on your ship allows you to do a particular action. And you can, for movement or shooting, you can click on, on space or on a particular item to act them. Otherwise, you can click on the, the component in the display. Left click to activate, right click to deactivate. Um, and then you uh, click action to make things happen. And if you want to see something cool again, like for instance destroying a ship, you can use this little replay button under here and it will show you again. So let's see the, my moment of success in another time. Okay, so that's the basics.